okay, so I kind of get it. I understand why everybody's excited and has enthusiasm about slap bass. Totally get it. But I wanted to understand or dive a little bit deeper of why people like it or what is the difference or what it is about slap bass. So we're going to talk about different styles of slap bass. And I want to reference something. I'm going to show some clips here. Some guys you may know, some guys you may not know. So just, you know, get ready. So I want to talk about a little clip that I saw Victor Wooten, the master of slap bass himself. He talked about different positions that you can play slap bass in. And I've talked about this before as well. Basically just saying position one, thumb straight up. Position two, thumb sideways. And position three, thumb pointing down. You can have your thumb going up. You can have your thumb going sideways. And I'm still bouncing off the string right now. Some people point their thumb downwards and, and twist their wrist this way. And in that clip, he also mentioned what he does, what he prefers. I use the sideways approach and I don't bounce off the string, not normally. And that got me thinking about different styles of slap bass, not just the position, but the style of the slap bass itself is so many different variations of the style. And I wanna go through some of them today with you guys and just show you exactly what I'm talking about and what you prefer. And if you see something that you may like and may try, by all means, go ahead and give it a try. So first and foremost, we're gonna start off with the Godfather, OG himself, Larry Graham. So his style, I want you guys, I want you guys to watch this very closely. His style is, well, just watch. <laughs> so freaking funky how much more funky can you get than that i mean it's larry graham right so his position is pretty neutral but the way he's slapping is almost like a pick slapping he's going through the string it's not super bouncy he's going through the string and his fingers are super close his index and his middle are super close to play together while he's you know slapping moving around singing at the same time it's like a hybrid style of of slapping and i, I noticed this with this particular piece of music he has different ways he plays in different styles. But for this one specifically, I wanted to see what exactly he was doing. So he was plucking and thumping at the same time. It's more of a more of aggressive thump, right? Or more of an ab aggressive pluck with your thumb. And then also using your index and in, in middle to pluck and pop the strings. So that was one style that I, that I saw and it was very interesting to me. Uh, the next style that I want to talk about is the bounce, right? And you notice that Larry wasn't bouncing that much. He was pretty, you know, pretty tight, staying pretty tight and close to the fretboard. But with this one, OG, another OG, Marcus Miller. So with Marcus Miller, he bounces a lot. You notice if you played anything, like if you notice any of Marcus's music or music pieces, he bounces a lot. I mean, bouncing as, as far as bouncing away from the string or away from the bass, that's a pretty dramatic movement. So you'll see him bounce a lot, but he also stays pretty tight if he needs to. So if he's plucking pretty fast and he has like a super fast bounce, he'll stay pretty tight, but that's, that's, a pro that's probably about it. Most of the time he's pretty, he's pretty out there, but still controlled, still controlled. You see it gets a little bit more melodic it gets a little bit more you know uh, the left hand becomes a little bit more involved right but it's still super funky super bouncy right Larry Graham had that also but I wanted to show that different style so that's Marcus's so I want you guys to see well yeah watch it let's just let's watch it again watch Marcus his bounce and then watch how tight he stays to the fretboard or to the string if he has to do a quick double bounce <laughs> And I also wanted to mention that his position, his style of slap bass is pretty neutral as well. His is pretty much to the side or uh, it's like a hybrid or, or, or of both. It's a mixture of both, like maybe thumb straight up versus you'll see it change from time to time. But for the most part, he's staying in that pretty neutral position and it's not upside down. I keep saying upside down. Forgive me. It's not thumb pointing down because upside down sounds like it's wrong and it's not wrong if it feels right to you. So. Speaking of upside down or thumb pointing down, 
the next bass player. You may all know him. Super, super popular bass player, known for a lot of iconic bass lines. Flea, right? Everybody knows Flea. Flea is a very aggressive slap bass player. When he does play slap bass, and he has that bounce that we were talking about as far as Marcus Miller. So this is the similarities between this. So he has a bounce like Marcus does, right? But his position is completely different. His, com his position is pointing down. So his thumb, you'll see in this clip, you'll see his thumb pointing down. And I mean, he's going for it. He's achieving that sound. It's hard for me. It's, I, I just, I can't get that position down, but if it works, it works. And obviously it's work for Flea. Super aggressive, super percussive, almost like a drummer uh, playing a bass line at the same time, right? So super, it, I just, I try to get that. It, it, it's just tough for me to get. Right. So that's that style. He has the position with the bounce at the same time. You get it. So I also wanted to include the OG himself, master of slap bass, Victor Wooten. I want to include another clip of him. So with Victor Wooten, you'll see. And this is kind of what changed my perception. Right. Um, I heard slap bass all the time and I saw it being played in the bounce. It seemed super erratic to me, like it was pretty wild. It seemed not controlled, and I had trouble controlling that when I did bounce. So when I saw Victor, not saying that that's wrong, but when I saw Victor Wooten play, and I saw it, he said what he preferred. I use the sideways approach, and I don't bounce off the string, not normally. And I saw that he went through the string, and his slap lines were so tight. It, it just had a different sound to them, and I couldn't even explain it or understand it at the time exactly what I was hearing, but I know what I was seeing. So I saw his technique and he was going through the string. I saw his playing and his slap bass and it was so tight, he was so close to the fretboard when he was playing. And it was just so much more controlled. And that's what I kind of gravitated to. And that was like my first influence of slap bass, the way that I adapted to playing slap bass. It was through him, his style, his sound. And I'll include a clip here. And, and I want you to watch closely of his position. He has a very neutral position, thumb to the side, and very tight position. So just watch. I mean, how can you not love Victor? Like, I mean, how can you not? I, I mean, anyway, he was just a very innovative person as far as slap bass goes. And he, he kind of changed the game as far as that style and it just sounding different, not only just looking different or position wise, because sometimes somebody can play with different positions and you couldn't tell what position they're playing in. But when he played, it sounded different on top of his preference as far as staying close and tight to the fretboard and not bouncing. So. With that being said, another influence in my playing, a guy named Donald Alford. So Donald is a monster. May, you may not know, I've had him inside the academy, we've done an interview before, but he is uh, super, I wouldn't even say underrated, but he is an amazing bass player. His style of slap bass is almost in another category. So he has a super hybrid style of slap. So when he slaps and when he plays grooves and slap grooves, it's almost like he's plucking with his thumb. And the crazy thing is he had a lot of influence in my playing and I stole a lot of stuff from him. I've told him this personally, so uh, don't worry about trying to snitch on me. But. I told him that and it, the way he plays and it's more of a different style and we'll get into that too and it's called greasing a little bit of that is called greasing when you're playing with your thumb and almost picking and keeping time we'll talk about that another uh, at another date but at the same time it's still like a slap groove you can't put it in a plucking category because he's not plucking so it's more of a hybrid type of style and it's very very subtle it's not like a 
it's it's not super aggressive uh, and, and it's very controlled it's not super aggressive at all it's very controlled very subtle uh, like a nice soft smooth groove type of movement but i just want you guys to see watch closely just watch donald Donald is a monster, absolute monster. And if you see, and if you notice, the lines start getting a little bit more melodic. The left hand starts working a little bit more with these lines and with these slap lines, and it, it becomes a little bit more subtle with the slap bass or with the left or with the right hand when you're plucking or slapping. So all of these different styles are great, are awesome. It depends on what you gravitate to. It really doesn't matter. I'm just telling you guys the two that you know, I kind of, it, it just, I just kind of went towards just because it was more of my style. I wanted to achieve something or a different or specific sound. And that blend of Victor and Donald were, I mean, I, I could have told so many different people. I have so many different influences as far as bass goes, but I wanted to show you guys the, the vast array uh, and variety of flat bass styles, not only just positions, but the style of play. And if you just notice, and if you go back and look at all of these different players and how different they play, but they all are playing slap bass. So that is my, <laughs> that is my explanation or that is my uh, synopsis of slap bass styles and not only positions, but the styles that go along with positions as well. So anyway, after every single lesson, I always say, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise whenever you play. Whenever these guys are playing, their notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. Let's follow that. Let's replicate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.